What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another Transfer Daily video for you guys today. The Premier League season is this close to starting for Chelsea fans. It's only a very short wait for us. We got the late kickoff on the Monday. So football is only about five or so days left before the Premier League season starts. We're still looking for a new goalkeeper. That We're still in talks with Edward Mendy. We're going to talk about that in this video as well. We know that Mendy is probably not going to start at Brighton or at the Liverpool game, but that's to be expected at this point. But we know Mendy is very close to being across the finish line, so we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about our competition, how rattled as hell they are about us recently, because we're going to chat about Jurgen Klopp's comments about us in the media as well. And we're also going to talk about new shirt numbers for the season. We're just going to round it off with that. Just a little update for you guys. But I feel like you guys would already know who the new shirt numbers are by now. But we're still going to talk about it a little bit. But guys, before I start this video, you already know what time it is. If you haven't done so already, smash that subscribe button. We're this close to hitting 15k. The channel is booming and I'm loving the support from you guys. So if you guys haven't done so already, please press that subscribe button. It's a one second thing and it changes it from red to blue, which is probably going to be a lot more visually pleasing for you guys. So please, if you haven't done so already, smash that subscribe button, press the like button as well and hit the bell notification button to be the first to know whenever I release any new content. Now, we know that Chelsea's spending isn't over. We knew that Kai Havertz wasn't going to be the last player that Chelsea signed. And we knew that Chelsea was still in the market for a goalkeeper. Talks with Mendy have progressed significantly over the last 12 hours. And Edouard Mendy has apparently now agreed personal terms. He's agreed a five-year deal with Chelsea. And he's already informed Renz of his wishes to sign for Chelsea as well. Now, this has been new sources that have come out over the last 12 hours and other people have reported on this as well. Me personally, I believe it. Not only just because this guy's like Fabrizio Romano saying it, but also because this does feel like the Chelsea way of doing it. It just feel, it fits in with the same mould of transfer that we've been doing over the entire window where we sort out the personal terms first. Where we get the player interested in joining the club first. We build on his desire to join the club. Get him to agree the personal terms. Then get him to go to the club as well and tell him that he wants to leave the club as well. Not try force a move. We're not Galacticos. We're not Real Madrid. It ain't like that. But we get the player on side first and then it adds pressure onto the club as well. You also got to remember, with the way the transfer window's been this season, with the way the market's crashed, but with the way we've also had a year's worth of money to spend, we're basically creating our own market. And we're the only teams out there that can put serious money in it. So long term, long term, in the case of these transfer rumors, in the case of these long negotiations for players, we eventually can hold on for the, mo for the money that we want and for the amount that we want. Why? Because we're the guys with the money compared to the rest of the transfer market, compared to clubs like Bayern Munich and Real Madrid, who could blow us out the window with transfer, with transfer money. They can't spend this year, but we can. So that's why we've been able to push through on our own money. That's why we've been so dominant in the transfer window. And that's why we've also been able to force clubs to accept whatever offer that we want. Now, this will be another W for Marina if we get this through. Because initially, they wanted 30 to 40 million euros for the goalkeeper. It was a new goalkeeper as well that they signed from last season. And now we look to be getting him at around 18 to 23 million euros. Chelsea have bidded another bid of 18 million pounds for him. Renz are still trying to hold out for the 23 million up front. What's been holding the deal back is that Chelsea want to do that 18 million pound deal and then add a 17 million bonus as well that will be paid through installments. But Renz want more of a fixed fee. They want a higher fixed fee initially and they want smaller money to get paid through installments because they want to try and put, they want to try and get max input as much as they can for the player that they get especially if they've had him for one year and they need to sell him and now they need to look for a replacement goalkeeper with about three four weeks left of the transfer window there's still negotiations and it still looks like we're a long way away from agreeing the fee but it's not too far away in terms of transfer valuation and also the marina effect i really do think this transfer can get completed in a matter of days Personally, I did want Oblak. I thought if we were going to go for a goalkeeper, especially with £70 million wasted on Kepa, if we're going to go out for another goalkeeper, we'd have to go out for the finished article. But we need to remember, as much as we pretend it has been this window, it is not FIFA career mode. We do not have unlimited financial takeovers. There comes a point where we have to really be frugal about our spending. And a short-term, I won't say short-term money, a short-term fix in terms of a financial standpoint would be better for us also because... If we got a £120 million goalkeeper and we cashed in on that release clause for Jan Oblak, 
that means Kepa is being replaced. At least bringing in a goalkeeper for about 20, 30 million pounds means that Kepa can compete for the position. As much as we want to see, I want to see Kepa compete for the position because I think it can get the best out of him. And I've already spoken about like the De Gea story and how he had to compete with Anders Lindegaard in his second season and how this could be a similar story to him as well. So I want to see Kepa stay and I want to see him get game time as well. I want to see who can be the better goalkeeper out of the two of them because I know they both offer completely different things. But we know if we sign someone like Jan, like Jan or Black, regardless of how good it would be to the team, that would be the end of Kepa. And Chelsea don't want that. Chelsea still believe in Kepa. They still think they can get the best out of him. Petr Cech still supports him. Lampard still supports him. But there's an understanding that he can't just have Willy Caballero as his own competition to take over if his performances are just that bad because it still puts all the pressure on him. Bringing in Mendy still puts a bit of pressure on him, but in my opinion, it's positive pressure. It's good pressure. That's the sort of pressure that he needs. That's what's best for him. So, guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. How long do you think it's going to take before we get Mendy? Regardless of when we get Mendy, I think Kepa is going to start the first two games of the season anyway. So hopefully he kicks off and starts running because if he has another poor start to the season, that is it as soon as Mendy comes in. You won't see Kepa playing for at least the next two or three months. So hopefully Kepa starts the season well because we know, see, we know he really struggles for confidence. We know when he starts having a bad blip, it just keeps going downwards and downwards. So guys, let me know your thoughts, down of, uh, let me know your thoughts on Kepa down in the comment section below let me know your thoughts on mendy as well do you think it's the right transfer do you think we'll end up holding out for 18 million or do you think we're gonna have to fork out the full 23 let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below next bit of news we're gonna talk about jurgen klopp who's had a couple of choice words to say about chelsea before i say anything if you guys haven't heard what he's had to say i'm gonna leave the video on for you now we live in the world at the moment with a lot of uncertainty obviously for some clubs it seems to be lesser important um how uncertain the future is, uh, owned by countries, owned by oligarchs, that's a, the that's a truth. So um, we're a different kind of club, it was always the same. So we got to the Champions League final two, year, two years ago. We won the Champions League last year and became Premier League champ um, this season, if you want, last season, um, by being the club we are, by leading the way we are leading. So there's nothing to say about it. We cannot change it just overnight and say, so now we want to behave like Chelsea, now we want to behave like them. Now they signed a lot of players, that can be an advantage, of course, for them. But that means they have to to fit together um, pretty quick as well. So it's not all only about bringing quality and you cannot bring in the 11 best players in the world and just hope a week later they play the best football they ever will play. It's about working together on the training ground. That will be probably an advantage for us. We work quite a while with each other, but I know people don't want to hear that. <laughs> but we did it last year um, pretty much that way. Uh, for our reasons, club reasons, um, we always want to improve. We always want to improve the sport, but there are different ways. Now, first thing I want to say is that I don't really understand the context of the question. I don't know what started off this Jurgen Klopp rant where he just wanted to go off on about, on about Chelsea for a little bit. But he says we're a different kind of club, saying we won the Champions League two seasons ago in the Premier League last season by being the way that we are and that we can't be like Chelsea. But... First off, Liverpool spent 75 million on Virgil van Dijk. They spent 70 million on Allison. We were interested in Allison as well, so we know that for sure. And 100 million on Fabi and Fabinho and Naby Keita in order to win those two trophies. Now, as a Chelsea fan, I'm not going to say anything about another club spending in order to try and win trophies. We completely understand the game is the game, but please don't get at us for doing the exact same thing. I get Liverpool had to sell Coutinho in order to get those players in as well. It was a 130 million transfer, so of course they got money to spend after that. But it's not like we didn't either. It's not like we didn't have the entire of the 18-19 money that we earned for finishing third and winning the Europa League to spend. It's not like we didn't have 130 million or 140, 150, no matter how much Marina's got. It's not like we haven't got that much money from the Eden Hazard money to spend as well. Or the 60 million million that Alvaro Morata got us from Atletico Madrid when we sold his bummy ass as well. So we have had money and we've it's not been a case of we've just had money injected into us yet again. We've been sitting on this for the last year on a transfer ban and the weird part is he knows this so this just feels like Jurgen Klopp just moaning for no reason. He also said it's a huge advantage all the players that we sign 
but they have to gel together which may be an advantage to them because these players are going to have to take a bit of time to gel together and it actually feels like the most real thing he said in that interview. It, players do have to gel together and we have Liverpool two games into the season so that could be a little issue that Liverpool tried to exploit with us. But Ben Chilwell is going to be out, Hakim Ziyech is going to be out, the only new players that might start are Thiago Silva, Kai Havertz and Timo Werner. It's nothing too deep. Mendy isn't going to start either if we get him in on time. So it's not going to be anything too deep and it's going to be players upgrading all three positions. So it just feels like Jurgen Klopp feeling a little bit worried and he's just sounding like all those rival fans who are saying, oh, Chelsea are going to be in a bad shape last season because we had a transfer ban and now we're going to be in a bad shape because we've got players that need to gel together and we and Lampard now has to win a trophy and the pressure's on him. It just feels like people are trying to push pressure on us and I don't really get what the moaning is all about. Even but Klopp is worried because he sees this season is going to be tougher than him than last season because Chelsea have strengthened. Manchester City are going to come out with a lot more energy because they've seen how bad that they were last season and they know that they can't repeat it. So Jurgen Klopp might be running a little bit scared. Or Jurgen Klopp is just triggered because we took Timo Werner from underneath his noses and Frank Lampard mugged him off at Anfield. I don't know. But it's not our fault that we had to sell only two players to get up to 200 million. And it's certainly not our fault that our billionaires are opposed to spend that their billionaires are opposed to spending, whereas ours isn't. If in my opinion, I would be quiet as hell if our club was gonna furlough staff until the shitstorm changed their mind. And if you want to talk about a difference in responsibility and approach, look no further than the way Chelsea and Liverpool have handled have handled themselves and the way they've acted during this crisis. I have rarely been more proud than Chelsea than the way they've acted with the NHS and with all the new initiatives that they've rolled out season after season after season. We've earned the right to spend. All Liverpool have done is fired staff and then changed their mind after the whole world turned against them. It's typical Liverpool moaning for no reason. But guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. We're going to go through the new shirt numbers out for the new season as well. Thiago Silva is going to take the number six with Rudiger occupying the number two that he used to wear at PSG. Timo Werner and Hakim Ziyech, as we know from the Brighton friendly, are going to be wearing the number 11 and the number 22. Ben Chilwell, surprisingly, he's taken the number 21. It feels like a bit of a weird one, I can't lie. Alonso's taken the number three, so that's understandable. I'm not going to moan too much about it. It's literally shirt numbers. If I'm going to be in a camera complaining about shirt numbers, I need to really reevaluate my life. Kai Havertz is taking Tamori's number 29. There was going to be a lot of questions about that, and in my opinion, this is another sign that Tamori's going to be going out on loan for the season. He did get given the number 14, but he is probably going to be going out on loan this season. We spoke about in the previous video so check that out if you guys haven't done so already and Pulisic is going to be Chelsea's number 10 all I can say huge upgrade from seeing Willian in that number 10 shirt all throughout last season Pulisic deserves it I don't think it's too much pressure on him to be honest everyone's putting these hazard comparisons on his name I've done the exact same thing I can't lie but he deserves the number 10 shirt out of all the other players I can see around him maybe you could hold it for a year and then say who wants to earn this number 10 shirt have it if you want but nah I, I get it. Pulisic having the number 10 it makes sense it fits him it suits him well I'm hearing fans who bought Pulisic number 22 as well are apparently going to get a refund at the Chelsea mega store so yeah I'm happy with the shirt numbers I just wanted to round it off let me know your thoughts on the shirt numbers as well down in the description below but yeah let me know your thoughts on everything else I said as well. Edward Mendy, are you guys happy with that? Do you think Kepa can fight his way back to first team fitness and back into first team squad? Let me know in the comment section below. And let me know how you feel about rattled Jurgen Klopp. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care and up the Chelsea.